big black cloud on a yellow plane. Sure enough, it looks like rain. Backing up all our faith and trust. Me and the wonder. everything that Albert's done for us. It's a great truck. All winter he waited, getting ready. All May he waited, all June. Now the ice is gone from the river and it's time to go. Time to look once again for the gold that beckoned the others to their death. He is Albert Faley, 73 years old. He lives alone at Fort Simpson on the Mackenzie River. He has lived alone most of his life. He travels alone. Welcome to Ganaitha Mie, Rabbit Kettle Lake. This is Ganaitha Mie, 
the two Femel in Naha Dehe, Nahani National Park. And it's a, a cultural place where traditionally the Dene would come to give thanks. There's some chicken here just waiting to go in. We're going to do a peanut sauce and then some rice noodles uh, to put it all on. And uh, salad, I'm just toasting some pecan for. down the river and we were all tired and cold and Jamie finds this gravel bar off the Nahani River at Hell Roaring Creek which normally is more like Heavenly Trickle and nobody's ever seen it Hell Roar but that day we found out later had it poured 40 millimeters. We had nothing but rain all day long. Poured rain while we were canoeing. Everybody frozen. And six o'clock in the morning I wake up because I hear a crash and I think maybe there's a bear at my bear barrel. So I look out my tent and I can't believe what I see. The creek, which was like 70 feet away, is now maybe 10, 12 feet from my tent. And I look around the corner at Lenore and Jerry's tent and they're like four feet, four feet from the edge of the creek. Like it has basically eaten into the silt all the way to our tents. So I jump out of my tent, I run over there, wake them up, uh, they jump out of their tent, they move it, they drag it across the sand. I think you guys can probably move your tent soon. It's probably the safest, you know, unless you want to float down the river or something. And 20 minutes later, not even, where their tent was is gone. Basically, it's, it's in Hell Roaring Creek, it's taken it away. As you can see, we've dragged our tent, and where we were is no longer there. Very exciting stuff here on the Nahani. <laughs> so that was quite an adventure. remarkably well, as usual, on these trips. Each uh, participant is taking care of their own uh, business. Each canoe carries all the participants' gear, as well as some of the group gear. We have two guides uh, who uh, lead uh, our work in terms of preparing meals, whereas the participants uh, set up their own tents and provide support to the guides. I was uh, mentioning to Jamie, one of our guides, that uh, the main difference is the guides take care of the uh, group stuff first, and then if they have time, they deal with their personal things, whereas the participants take care of their personal things first, and if they have time, they deal with the group things. A really strong group this time, and a lot of fun. Down by the water, and down by the old main Where do we go? Nobody knows I've got to say I'm on my way down Welcome to Nile Cho, this is Virginia Falls. Nile Cho is the name for the waterfall. Uh, Cho means big or sacred, so it's an action word. So it means the big or sacred waterfalls. Virginia 
falls, twice as high as Niagara. Few men have seen them, for few men ever come this far up the Nahani. Sunblood Mountain after about three and a half hours hike up. We are about uh, 1500 meters up here and it was about a 950 meter climb and uh, if you look just over there you can see what we paddled the last few days down in the Hani and you can actually see Oxbow Lake. What do we got going here today? Uh, we have some lasagna, garlic bread, and uh, salad over here. the ordeal, the portage. Everything will have to be carried up around the falls. The food, the gasoline, the motor, and lumber to build another boat on top. Everything will have to be carried a mile and a quarter uphill. It will take at least a week. It's not a portage all the time. Man. Nobody knows Don't ever say you're on your way down when God gave you style and gave you grace And put a smile upon your face Find the gold, then thousands will come. It's the Nahani gold rush, people will say. Albert Faley started it. All right, so here we are in Virginia Falls. We're done our last portage of the trip. It's a beautiful blue sunny day and we've got all our white water coming up, starting with Fourth Canyon. Just like this rainstorm, this August day song, 
Dipping the Nahani, the frigid Nahani. <sighs> Haven't seen myself in eight days. Probably not a pretty sight. Behind me, the beautiful pulpit rock. We're headed down to Morton's Knob this afternoon. No need for the helmet. Spray decks will remain on. Uh, no dry suits necessary, no wet suits. Beautiful day. If you've been thinking you're all that you got, Feel alone anymore. Cause when we're together, then you got love. Cause I am the river, and you are the shore. Just to celebrate uh, such an awesome trip and being at the top of Pulpit Rock, I'm gonna fire off a bear banger. Leaving there It's a beautiful sunny day. Uh, we're about 450 meters up. Pulpit Rock is down to my right. Uh, it's just a gorgeous day. Uh, we all came up here, enjoyed some chocolate bars, had a good time. Um, great views. Had a little bang from uh, Quinn with a bear banger, and uh, it's, it's perfect up here. Really nice spot. Wish you were here. We're lovers caress as we sing the bar song Rejoicing together when we greet the sea And it goes on and on Watching the river Enjoying your time in the stern, Lona. I love being in control. Learning and yearning to run through the road. And it goes on and on. Watching the Coach oh, Jamie, is it formal tonight? <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, please come dressed in all your formal wear. So this is the very best um, tripping. Uh, yeah, what's left of it? I'm one one sleeve short, but uh, yeah, so. I do still have my tie. All right, this is the, the <laughs> yeah, traditional dress of uh, Albert Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> Scalloped potatoes and ham. Night number nine on the Nahani. <laughs> Sun tomato. I have a dessert here. It's called Sex in a Pan. Yeah. So we got some swirly chocolate and vanilla there, uh -huh. and some uh, chocolate shavings and little uh -huh. chocolate chunks there on the top. Uh, is that a skirt and a tie I'm filming behind it? Yes, that's <laughs> right. And it's amazing that you've gotten me on camera saying sex in a pan while wearing this. <laughs> quite, quite impressed. <laughs> I just think it's the rubber boots that complete the outfit. <laughs> the legend tells of a lost gold mine hidden in this strange wilderness. 
the men who died were looking for it. The headless mountains, the funeral range, tombstones for the men who died looking for the gold. R.M. Patterson, a bit of an adventurer himself, in his book Dangerous River, describes the legend of the McLeod brothers. Charlie McLeod started a search for his brothers, which ended in 1908 with the finding of the bones of Willie and Frank in their camp by the Nahanni. They were found in the mountain-ringed valley that lies between lower and second canyons of the Nahanni. The valley was named that day by Charlie McLeod's party. They called it Dead Men Valley. And to this day, it bears that name. They say it's a haunted place. Martin Jorgensen's skull was gone too. Angus Hall disappeared. Shabak and Holmberg starved. Mulholland and Epler disappeared. And Phil Powers, just a few bones left. So we're off to a prospector's cabin, just off the Nahani River, and we're going to deposit this paddle as a, a testament and a memento of our fabulous trip down the South Nahani River. Um, this prospector's cabin is abandoned, but it's, uh, it's tradition to stop there and hang the paddle with the date uh, of our trip and the names of all the participants. And so uh, there'll be a lasting memory to this trip that will, uh, will outlast us, uh, and we're looking forward to visiting that cabin. part of the eddy line on River Right at the top. And we have this sort of, not quite bird's eye view, but a better we're nice and high up. We get a pretty good view of the rapid once we get down in our boat. And that brings us into the O, which is obstacles. Um, so, yeah, you try to pinpoint the obstacles, and I think we have here sort of um, what, are, what are a few of the obstacles that we've talked about? The main one is the one in the walls. Yeah, the walls, obstacles, you know, like the rock there, the rock there, and the rock there. What are these?
Alright, well, Quinn's over here making hash browns, and uh, we've got bacon to fry up, and uh, we're gonna have some cinnamon buns here, so I'm just gonna check on them if you wanna see how they look good. I heard a newborn baby cry through the night. I heard a perfect echo die. On the floor to his right lay a small handgun. There were powder burns on his right temple, indicating that he was shot at close range. On his desk was a suicide note, and his right hand held the pen that had written. We managed to miss the two biggest parts of the thunderstorm with heavy rain coming down. We managed to paddle through a little bit of light rain, paddled so hard and with such excitement that in fact we missed the last gravel bar and had no chance of finding a place to call home for tonight. Until we came here and you can see what a wonderful place we got. Okay? A lovely, lovely, lovely sandbar. This sandbar has many distinguishing features. It's relatively flat, there are no rocks, however, there is quicksand. If you step in the wrong place, you sink up to your hips. We already lost two campers. Now, you know, people people were just really down on the splits, said there wasn't enough excitement, you know. Uh, just everyone knew what was coming. Uh, you know, we'd have, we've had a lot of gravel bar camping, and I think everyone was getting kind of tired of it. So, I'll, you know, thought it was a time for a change. The other distinguishing feature uh, is evident from uh, my clothes. Uh, you can see that I'm wearing my anti-bug suit here. Uh, the bugs here uh, have, are about uh, as numerous uh, as sparrows in the square. We have seen the most wildlife of the trip, you know, in, in terms of numbers. Uh, very ferocious bugs and so we're wondering whether they might carry off one of the tents during the night. We're hoping that isn't the case, uh, but just in case, uh, we're all getting fortified with apple teenies so that any of the bugs that do bite us will keel over dead. The general consensus is that this is one of our, one of our better campsites on the trip, I would say. Uh, I've done a poll of people and there's, I'd say, around a 90% approval rating for this campsite. So. Everybody who agrees with him, put up your hand. Uh oh, uh oh. Quinn, what are we eating tonight? So, uh, we've been slaving over this hot fire right here with bug jackets on, you know, and just make this amazing lasagna. You know, the sauce lined up right there, and Jamie's, Jamie's layering up the lasagna noodles right now. On top of that, we're gonna have like five different cheeses. We got some cottage cheese. And Somewhere deep. Anybody sorry to see the last of this sandbar? My soul. Oh, this is my favorite campsite. Yes. <laughs>